Developing a Zelda game isn't as simple as generating an overworld, filling it up with enemies and setting the player loose. A huge amount of thought and work goes into creating every single element of the game, from how it'll look, to the theme, the dungeons, the characters, enemies, and yeah, someone somewhere has to draw concept art of Tingle in his underwear, which is pretty much the most essential part of developing a Zelda game. This means that, inevitably, there's a huge amount of content that doesn't make the cut for the final game. Planned assets that either were omitted due to time constraints, a different vision for the game, or other reasons. Some of these, arguably for the best, but there's other cut content from Zelda games that's actually really cool, like the absolute nightmares that were Twilight Princess's Moblins. So today I'll go through five of these, five picks for awesome cut content or scrapped ideas from games in the Zelda series. It doesn't matter whether it was just an idea doodled by a concept artist, or a completely scrapped, fully designed dungeon, I'm treating everything the same for this list. Alright, let's get into it. Number 5. Wind Waker's Sunken Hyrule I know what you're thinking. They didn't cut this out, you can go to Hyrule below the Great Sea. Yeah, not quite like planned. The Wind Waker has a ton of awesome cut content such as the scrap dungeons like Great Fish Isle's Water Dungeon, or a feature that let Link age subtly as the game progressed. But in my opinion, the most game-changing idea that never made it into the final product was the ability to freely travel between two overworlds, the Great Sea and Hyrule Below. There's concept artwork of a fisherman on a small post in the Great Sea, with his line in the water. Below the waves lies a green overworld, like the Hyrule we saw in the final game, with a hook dangling from the sky that Link can grab to be pulled up to the surface, and then thrown aside by the fisherman as trash. This is such an awesome concept, if you don't think too hard about how it would actually work. If instead of just Hyrule Castle, Ganon's Tower and the small pathway, we got a large field and maybe even a dungeon or two in this sunken kingdom, which could be travelled freely to and from. Perhaps whirlpools in the Great Sea above could suck you down into Hyrule, and then you could return via these fishermen and their hooks. There's actually tiny little details still left in the game showing that Hyrule was planned to be a bigger explorable area, such as this little unreachable cave and this mysterious hidden area in Hyrule Castle. A sequel to Wind Waker, Wind Waker 2, was originally planned that allowed Link to traverse a land-based Hyrule on horseback, though this eventually became Twilight Princess. Perhaps the original vision for the Wind Waker's sunken Hyrule was a lot more ambitious than we thought. The Wind Waker is still probably my favourite Zelda game of all time, I'm still debating where Breath of the Wild fits into all of this, so personally anything extra is fascinating to me, especially the idea of an expanded sunken Hyrule. Number 4. The Minish in Breath of the Wild Again, this is probably just my bias coming into play, but I think it's awesome that the Minish, also known as the Pikori, were planned to appear in Breath of the Wild. Well, we don't know for sure that they're the Minish, but at the very least, a race of miniature people that lived in small houses were planned, even modelled, but never made it into the full game. The Minish Cap is my absolute favourite 2D Zelda game, so I've admittedly got a soft spot for the little guys, but I think this would have been awesome. I've mentioned before that I think Breath of the Wild desperately needed more variety in the stuff that can be found in this overworld, so a little village of tiny people would have been a really welcome surprise. While it seems Link could just kneel down and talk to them normally, just like in Minish Cap he'd have been able to shrink down to their size to adventure with them. It was originally planned for the Minish, or whatever else this tiny race is, to appear all over Hyrule, and probably play a bigger role in the game's story. It was eventually decided that they wanted to let other characters and settlements have the spotlight, however. Judging by how much game director Hidemaru Fujibayashi mentions he wanted them in the game, it's possible that we'll see the Minish make their debut in a 3D Zelda game in the future. Number 3. Ganondorf in Majora's Mask Yep, you heard that right. Though, don't get too excited, it's not as awesome as it sounds, though it's still pretty cool. Majora's Mask 3D added fishing holes, little ponds or other water areas Link can chill out in and catch some fish. In Termina, they added the swamp fishing hole and the ocean fishing hole. Weirdly enough though, in the files of the 3D remake, models for Ganondorf, Impa and Sheik can be found. 
Their file names, Fishing Man 1 and 2 and Fishing Woman, suggest that they were planned to appear in the fishing hole, though what they would have done here is unknown. Of course, this wouldn't actually be the Ganondorf we know and love. It'd be a Terminian counterpart to him. Like Kotaki and Koumi in Termina not being the malevolent surrogate mothers of Ganondorf, and instead running a potion shop or a boat ride. So, Ganondorf was planned to have a Terminian equivalent in the 3DS remake of the game, who spent his days chilling at the fishing hole instead of stomping kingdoms into dust. It would have been awesome to be able to chat with a pretty mellow Ganondorf without risking having your head caved in or a curse put on you. Number 2. Breath of the Wild's Guardian Concepts If you've seen my video, Breath of the Wild could have been much darker, you already know about these. But in the Breath of the Wild Arts and Artifacts book, we learned that the development team originally had ideas that would have made the Guardians even more terrifying than they actually are, and that's saying something. The book has a few concept designs for the Guardians, including some that look pretty similar to the game's final design, large arachnoid robots. But some of the concept designs for these things, four in particular, are just straight up horrifying. A monstrous crab, well over 50 feet tall, with long spindly legs and huge claws. An eerie, unnerving, thin thing that just gives me the creeps. A gargantuan spider, dwarfing Link, covered in hairs, chains, and eyeballs. Or a colossal skull demon, walking around on two stick-thin legs. Imagine gliding into Hyrule, fresh off the Great Plateau and ready for some adventure, when you travel too far north into Hyrule Field and are greeted with this nightmare. If you want to see a full video covering these, click on the card in the top right, but for just how creepy these alternate Guardian designs are, I have to put them on a list of awesome scrapped Zelda ideas. Number 1. The Triforce in Ocarina of Time This one's sort of the holy grail of Zelda rumours. Obtaining the Triforce in the game was sort of like the Mew under a truck rumour from the original Pokemon games. You can get the Triforce in Ocarina of Time! If you beat the Running Man, the Triforce appears. Jump directly into the centre of the lava in Ganon's castle to get the Triforce. But obviously, it's been 20 years. We know that now, there's no way whatsoever to actually obtain the Triforce. It doesn't matter if you leave the game on for a week in the Temple of Time, or blow up all the gossip stones in the game before finishing it, you can't get it. But at one point, it was planned. There's a trailer for Ocarina of Time that released all the way back at Space World 1996, in which, alongside footage of Link fighting goofy beta Stalfos warriors and venturing through a weird blue dungeon, we see him open a large chest, a chest which contains the full Triforce. So although this was obviously scrapped way before the game released, we know that Nintendo originally planned to have the Triforce obtainable in the game as the reward for whatever this blue dungeon was. Or at least the Triforce played a big enough role in the game to feature it being found in a chest in the trailer for the game. Who knows what Link would have done with the full Triforce or why it was scrapped. It could have been a Skyward Sword type deal, wishing with the full might of the Triforce to destroy the villain completely. I think Ocarina of Time's story works perfectly fine as is, but it'd be cool to see how this would have changed it. So there you go, 5 picks for awesome cut content or scrapped ideas for Zelda games. The Zelda series is special because each game has so much heart, so much character and I love seeing the design process behind them, because it shows just how much love, work and care goes into designing each and every instalment. What do you guys think of these 5 picks? Which of these would you most like to have made it into a full game? Let me know in the comments. If you like this video, leave a like, or if you want to see some more Zelda and Smash Bros content from me, subscribe. Cheers guys, and I'll see you next time.